QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Example Number 2 Closed Project Zero Out Work in Process and Billings Account. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation, noting that we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view on down below, duplicating some tabs to put some reports in, right click in the tab up top to duplicate it, right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again, back to the tab to the middle, we're going to go to the reports on the left hand side, open up the balance sheet report, tab to the right as it's thinking, reports on the left, this time we want the P to the L, the profit to the loss, closing up the hamburgie and changing the range, 10125 to 06325 and let's see this on a month by month breakout so we can see those timing differences we've been focused on and they are beautifully timed with regards to the revenue and the expenses in the proper time periods let's support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it let's go to the tab to the left and close up the ham buggy and change the range 010125 to 1231 not 1231 let's go to 06325 and let's see this one on a class breakout. It's okay without the classes, but it's just leveling it up when you have classiness involved in it as well. And so let's go to the tab to the left and we're down to the projects on the left. We're in project number two. Recap in an Excel format of what has been done. We started out with an estimate. Based on that estimate, we came out with a billing structure. The billing structure is not according to what actually happens, but according to the pre-assigned billing structure, we're going to be charging the client. We charged them a starting point of the 10,000 basically deposit. And then we had the actual items that took place broken out between materials, labor, and overhead for what we did. And we recorded those in the format of cost of goods sold and figured out what our revenue should be on more of a completed uh, percentage of completion type of basis so that we can then record our revenue based on these items as opposed to on our billing items. And we did that through our whole process here. And now the job is done. And we can see that because our revenue is now at the 2377, which was our starting kind of projection for our revenue. And we have then our, our work in process and our billings account. Uh, tying out here for the most part it being off by rounding a difference of a rounding so now all we need to do is close this job out at this point in time and from a journal entry perspective that's quite easy i could just zero uh, these accounts out when we look at this same thing on the quickbooks side of things note if we had multiple jobs in play it becomes quite nice on the balance sheet that we have it broken out by class this way because the classes give us that nice breakout so if i if i change this to 123125 for example and i had multiple classes then i can see this work in process broken out so i could see you know that quite clearly that they that, you know that we're done with it and if i go into it if i didn't use the classes i could do it this way as well here's my detailed report that i could break out by customer uh, but remember that if you do it this way you would need to make sure that you have the customer names which is another reason that the invoice is a is a nice form it's nice to use an invoice as opposed to a journal entry because the journal entry might limit the kind of naming structure over here and we'll take a look at that uh, shortly with this last bit 
So I'm going to go back on over. And so let's record it with a journal entry and then we'll go over and do it in QuickBooks. So I'm going to make another blue section for that last journal entry down here. And it was so even before, but now I got this one last bit hanging down here, whatever. And this is going to be on five, five thirty-one. We're going to close this thing out. And I'm just going to say that working, let's do the billings needs to be debited, did, 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 did. debited by 100,000 and the whip, the work in the process is off by like a rounding difference. One, oh, 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 one it needs to be a negative for the credit side of things. And that'll basically uh, balance, uh, take this balance down to, 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 to zero donut it out at the zero. So let's go into the uh, billings first. I'm going to say F2 plus F2 and just zero this thing out. No effect on the income statement. Billings down to zero. Mui B to the end and then in the work in process, the other side of things, F2 plus F2. Roll it on down. Work in process. And it goes to zero. So, that, so now that everything's closed out and basically the job's done, there's our our checking account which matches the the net income we're off by rounding difference here so that's okay that's why we gave that rounding range for our greenness down here and then the 2377 uh, which is our profit matching what's in our checking account because we've only been recording transactions for this one particular job which of course matches our estimate that we had over here because we made it all work out uh, perfectly in that our expenses matched exactly to what the estimate is now in practice you might have a difference of course between the actual expenses that you'd have to adjust for kind of like at the end or, or as you go but we don't want to get into i just want to look at the revenue recognition at this point in time maybe we'll get into more detail with that in a future problem or something but uh so so let's do that over here now we now naturally you might say the first form to use would be a would be a journal entry and you could use a journal entry uh, however, like if you're trying to sort, like we saw with this account by, 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 uh, internally, uh, by name, it can cause a bit of an issue and it might not be as easy to see if I go over here in customer number two and look at the detail, this, these, these items are usually going to be populated when I use forms. So let's do it with a journal entry and then I'll delete it most likely. And I'll do it with like an invoice so we can see kind of the difference. So I'm going to say it would be most natural to someone like me who's I learned accounting before software to say I'm just going to do everything with a journal entry, right? Even though that's not usually the best practice because there's a reason that the software is designed to do stuff with the forms. So so I'm going to say in any case, if I did it with a journal entry, I would just go, OK, there's a debit here. This this billings needs to be debited just like we did billings debited uh, by 100,000 and to close out close out out job number one uh, number two and then the name I do have a name field here which I could put the customer and I'll put uh, project two and hopefully that will show up in the name field but I have some doubts that it'll, it'll do what exactly what we want and I do have the class tracking ability uh which is nice so i could still assign each line item to a class which will be helpful with the journal entry and then the other side is going to go to uh whip work in process work in process work in process and that's going to be 10001.2 10001.2 and the name also is going to be project two and the class is going to be project two to close out this thing. So that should do it in terms of, of the journal entry, but let's see if it does everything we would like. So please balance. It's not in balance. Okay. I'm off by that. And so the difference, I'm just going to put the cost of goods sold of the two of the 110 because it's in material. I want to put it to an income statement account so that it'll close out and and wash out in the closing process instead of being on a balance sheet account where it'll hang around right i want it to disappear because it's in material let it wash out to retained earnings 
or capital account or equity or whatever. So save it and close it. And then we're gonna go to the tab to the right and run it. And so now it's nice and closed out and the billings account is closed and the or billings and work in process. So if I go into the work in process, however, <laughs> and I try to sort this by name, notice that name field isn't there. So, so, so it's, I still, if I have the class tracking, that might not be a problem because I can kind of break it out by class up here. Uh, but, but if I go in, if I'm trying to sort in here, then I don't have that name field. So I can't really sort it by customer, which is kind of like, I, I might want uh, to do that because, because there's no, there's no customer name here. Although it did still sort by the project, I think, for customer two. So that might not be a problem. So that, that, that could work. I'm gonna go back and then the other side goes into the work and process, same kind of thing. So now it's in here as a journal entry, no name. If I wanted to sort this way by customer, then I think it's still pulling in there by, by customer, even though there's not a name there. So that might, that might be okay. I'm going to go back on over. If I go to the first tab, the other thing to kind of test out is if I go to the left side over here and I look at my sales information for customer number two, and I look at all my, all my transactions, the, the journal entry doesn't really show up here. So I don't, like if I'm looking in this area, I don't really see the journal entry that closes out that job. And, and maybe I want to see that over here. So that might be a reason why I might want to use a form. So let's just do that. I, I could use a form to do that. So I could go back. I'm going to go back into where I was. I was in the sales. Sorry, I kind of jumped around off screen here. So, so I could go like I could go back in here and let's delete what we did and just try to do it with an invoice because all of this stuff that are in these two accounts are done with an invoice. So I can do this journal entry with basically an invoice, just like we did with, with the other stuff. So I'm going to say, let's close this out and I'm going to delete it, delete it. Get out of here thing. We're going to do it a different way and then go back on up. And so now it's back. It has reappeared. It has reappeared. It has reappeared just like that pimple that I've got on my nose. Anyways, uh, now we're going to let's do it now let's do the same thing but with an invoice we're going to say it's an invoice and let's say that this is going to be for project number two and it's going to be 530 and so if it was an invoice i'm just going to use this like a journal entry now so usually accounts receivable would go up and the other side would be going to uh to, to revenue driven by the items over here but what i want to do what I want to have happen is I want the work in process to go down to the billings account. So if I think about it, uh, uh, we're going to say accounts receivable would normally be debited. And so the, the credit I'm going to say is going to work in process. So this is going to be my work in process thing. And that'll be the positive number of uh, just the straight or 10001.2, 10001.2. This is going to go to class number two again. And then the other side is going to go to the billings. Hopefully I went the right way. If not, then I'll just go back in and fix it. It's not a big deal. Don't have to stress out about it or anything. Don't get crazy if I'm doing it backwards because I'll just go back in and fix it. So there it is. And this should be negative. So now. What's this going to do? Well, accounts receivable is not going to happen. Uh, and then I got a two, that two cost of goods sold. I got to take something to cost of uh, goods sold. So let's make another item. Let's make it a service item. It's going to be close out to cost of goods sold item. Just to zero this thing down it needs to go to the cost of goods sold account just to zero it out because it's immaterial this is immaterial it's not significant so we're going to say okay 
and that needs to be for the uh, 1.2 class 2. Oh, I went the wrong way. With that, this needs to be negative. Okay, so that should do it, right? Right? All right, let's save it and close it and see what happens if I go to my report over here running. Now, uh, it closed it out again. And then if I go into this worksheet, everything is being recorded basically with an invoice. But I used like this invoice to just record a journal entry. But the reason I thought that might be useful is because then if I sort this by uh, customer, uh, then then the customer name is exactly the same. So if you filtered by name or something like that, then it'll all be the same, even though the journal entries seem to still pull in, you know, by customer, but everything kind of matches in this account. So if you sorted by any of these line items, it should, it should, you would think it would, it would be easier to filter for different options. I would think the other side billing, same thing billings over here is now I zeroed it out with an invoice. So it kind of matches everything else. And then if I went to my internal stuff over here and I, I see, I could see the invoice and I might want to put in the, in the memo, of course, this is the close to close out, to close out, like close out in transaction or something like that, save it and close it so that I can see that this, so I've got all these invoices in here that aren't actually going to the customer, but any invoice that has a zero balance, I can I can safely assume is an internal invoice and as opposed to the ones that have balances. And so that works pretty well. And I get to see all the detail of everything that's happening in this screen, as opposed to if I had a journal entry where I can't really see everything in this screen. Now, the last thing you can do to close this thing out is we can go to the project over here and we can say that I want to close out this project because we're done, dude. Dis dishes are done, dude. And so I'm gonna say this is gonna be completed. Completed. All right, so then it's done. And so if I go back on over here, now we've got the project has disappeared, it's gone. If I go back to my reports, then I can run the reports by class. I can run it for the full year here. If I go to the tab to the right, I can see it in a profit and loss format. If I duplicate that, I can also see the income statement. Let's do the whole year, 123125, and break it out by class, because I did the class thing as well. So we can have a classy report, as well as a monthly report. The last one was too monthly. I prefer to have more class and less months, less monthliness and more classiness. So in any case, then it breaks it out by class and it gives us that nice total at the end. And I can duplicate this again and we can see reports on the left hand side and we can check out the reports for the pro for the project project summary report and i can make that from 010125 123125 and run it so there's our information uh by project and this one's nice because i can i can filter it right so i could say i just want the open projects for example so i've got my nice filtering field over here where I can say that I have the project status of uh, if I just want the the uh, open project, so in progress projects. So that's the number one because number two has been closed at this point in time. So that's a nice uh, kind of feature if you look at the if you look at the projects uh, in this format. The classes are going to be pulling up all the projects that are within the class. Now you could go into the class field. And, and indicate that this project is closed with a with something, you know, you can mark it off to indicate that that, that class is closed and this class is, is open or something. You put a C after it or O after it in your, in your class fields or something like that. If you wanted to track that here, we also tagged some stuff. So if I duplicate this again, and if I go into my reports on the, on the left, you've got your tags. And uh, the, we have the tag profit and loss report and the tags by transaction. So if I change the date 010125 to 123125 and run it by tag, then you've got your 
uh, your 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 project one tagged stuff that we have here. Uh, I don't think we pro we didn't tag the second project, but if you had another project, it might, it'll probably give you the two projects, but the tags don't give you that total. So tags to me are like a like a less a little bit a fairly less sophisticated use of the classes, but can still give you this breakout on an income statement. And that could be quite useful, especially if you're already using the classes for something else and, and you, you can't use the location tracking because you want to do it line by line and uh, and or you're not you're not using QuickBooks Pro Plus or using some prior some lesser costly version, which doesn't have classes. And then you can use kind of like the tags to do a similar kind of of double check type of thing. Also note that all of this stuff, whether we're talking tags whether we're talking class tracking over here or location tracking to some degree or the the well location tracking maybe not so much but the 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 projects are usually breaking out the income statement into categories and it could be useful to break out some of those accounts on the balance sheet that we need to track such as in this case like a work in process account in a billings account which the classes uh, are could could help to do that or you want to be able to sort this detailed report by something you know like customer so you can kind of see the detail uh of of the of what is in work in process in the billings account by you know project and then of course on the project side over here we have our projects that we can sort by in progress completed projects or you know all status projects and then obviously when we go into these particular projects we get in essence again another kind of income statement and we can run reports from here but these are going to be the project reports that are going to be for one specific project right so i could see the detail for that project i don't get to see the whole all of the projects together as we do when we when we run this this report if i could run it by by class or or like this projects report, which is a little bit more summarized over here. So uh, that's that's the general idea. Again, our focus has been on mainly the the the, the process costing tool. But again, when you use that tool, it's usually when you're in this kind of system where you have this revenue recognition uh, kind of issue because of these longer projects.